The far-field radiation pattern of a half-wave dipole, in theory, has perfect rotational symmetry with respect to phi, so rotationally around the z-axis. It has nulls at theta equals 0 degrees and at theta equals 180 degrees, and its maximum is in the plane where theta equals 90 degrees. This is a graph of antenna directivity on the plane phi equals 0 and phi equals 180. So this is as though we were looking at the antenna from somewhere on the xy plane. You can see that radiation is broadside from the antenna outward in the xy plane, and no radiation is going upward or downward. This is another plot of the same radiation pattern, but this time viewed from the positive z-axis on the theta equals 90 plane. Here you see the rotational symmetry of the radiation outward on the xy plane. And we can also look at the radiation pattern in terms of a 3D plot. So this is the radiation pattern viewed from the positive z-axis. Regions of high directivity are shaded red, and as directivity decreases, the coding color changes to orange, to yellow, to green, to blue. Here's the same plot viewed from the positive x-axis. And here is an oblique view from somewhere in the first octant. 3D plots are pretty difficult to interpret in static images, but if we tilt it around a bit, you can hopefully see what's going on. And again, you can see that the maximum directivity is broadside from the line of the antenna and rotationally symmetric about the wire, while the minimum directivity is seen in the upward and downward directions. At the design frequency, where the length L of the antenna is equal to half a wavelength, the maximum directivity of the dipole antenna is approximately 1.64 in linear scale, or 2.16 dB. Remember that this can easily be increased by adding reflector and director elements, as we saw with the Agiuda antenna. Also at this frequency, the input impedance of the antenna will be approximately equal to 73 plus J42.5 ohms. Notice that this is inductive. That's because of the fringing fields of the antenna, as we discussed earlier. Here's a graph of the input impedance to show what's going on. So here you have the real part and the imaginary part of the input impedance plotted on the same axes. And for the purposes of this example, I used a design frequency of 5 gigahertz. So this antenna is exactly half a wavelength long at 5 gigahertz. So here's the design frequency of the antenna on the graph. And you can see that the input impedance here has a real part of approximately 73 ohms and an imaginary part of approximately 42.5 ohms, which is inductive. We can also observe here that the resonance of this antenna, which is defined by a zero ohm reactance, is actually happening at this slightly lower frequency. And this is where the antenna will actually want to operate. It's also worth noting that at this frequency, the real part of the input impedance is lower than 73 ohms and will more closely match a 50 ohm feed line. Again, in order to shift the operating frequency up to match your target design frequency, all you would need to do is slightly trim the ends of the antenna to compensate for the effective length added by the fringing fields.